Remember how we established that the change in volume for compressed water was barely noticeable when we first introduced TV diagrams? Link to that lecture is below if you haven't watched it yet. Even though there is in fact a slight change in density, and therefore a change in specific volume when moving from one temperature to another, the change is even smaller when going from one pressure to another. For example, the specific volume at 20 degrees Celsius and 1 bar is different than the specific volume at 100 degrees Celsius and 1 bar. It's really small, especially when considering how much these values change during the saturated region, but it exists. The difference between 20 degrees Celsius at 1 bar or 20 degrees Celsius at 0 0.0233 bar, and by the way that is the saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius, is so small that we're not even going to consider it. This means that in general, for compressed liquids in thermodynamics, we'll usually assume an incompressible fluid. This also means that we will be assuming that the specific volume, and with it, the specific internal energy and specific enthalpy, are a function of temperature only, not pressure. We can assume that the specific volume for any given pressure value and any temperature below the saturation temperature is the saturated liquid specific volume, Vf, at the temperature of interest. And we can do the same for specific internal energy and specific enthalpy. If we look at a close-up of the TV diagram, we can see that if we have a compressed liquid at a specific pressure, its specific volume is not exactly the same Vf value for that temperature. In fact, if we understand these diagrams properly, we know that if we say our fluid has Vf for that temperature as its specific volume instead of the real V, it would mean that our fluid would be at a lower pressure than what we really have. However, like I explained in that TV diagrams and property tables main lecture, these lines are really almost parallel to the saturated liquid boundary. Therefore, assuming that the specific volume V for any given temperature and pressure is the same as Vf for that temperature is very reasonable. We can see this very easily if we take note of some of the values for specific volume of water in its compressed state for let's say 5, 10, and 15 megapascals and a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. Now this is just an example and the values and axes are clearly not to scale but it paints a clear picture for any temperature and pressure combination that is in the compressed liquid region. If we look this up in our tables, we can write down the specific volume values for each pressure line. What we're saying here, by assuming that Vf is the specific volume for water at 60 degrees Celsius, regardless of its pressure, is that the specific volume is 0 0.001017. This means an error of 0.2% for 5 megapascals, 0.4% for 10 megapascals, and 0.6% for 15 megapascals. We're literally going from an actual pressure of 19.947 kilopascals, the saturation pressure at 60 degrees Celsius, to 15 megapascals, almost a 1000 increasing pressure, and we're only finding a difference of less than 1% for the specific volume. And this is why it is indeed safe to assume these properties to be temperature dependent and not pressure dependent. Of course, for compressed liquids only. Graphically, what this means is what we had already established initially when looking at these diagrams. The pressure lines in the compressed liquid region are almost parallel to the saturated liquid boundary, at least for low temperatures. Let's recall the initial state of the third problem example for the previous lecture. We had 5 kilograms of water contained in a piston cylinder assembly initially at 5 bar and 250 degrees Celsius. If heat is slowly removed to cool down the water vapor to around 100 degrees Celsius, what is the new specific volume? Try solving this simple example yourself now before watching the solution. And if you want to check out other examples where we use what we learned here, make sure to check out the links in the video description. At 5 bar, or what is the same at 500 kilopascals, we see that the saturation temperature is 151.83. This means that the water at 5 bar and 250 degrees Celsius is at a superheated phase. However, this is not important for the question we're being asked. We did want to find what the saturation temperature is for 500 kilopascals because in this piston cylinder system, pressure will be kept constant. To find the specific volume of the water when the temperature drops to 100 degrees Celsius, 
which we now know is below the saturation temperature, we would have to use compressed liquid tables. However, from what we're learning here today, we said that we really don't need to use a compressed liquid table to find P500 and T100. In fact, from the tables that textbooks usually include, there is not a table for such a low pressure. From what we learned here today, what we're saying is that we can assume the specific volume to be the same as the saturated liquid specific volume, or VF, for a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Since we established that we are going to assume that the specific volume is a function of temperature only. We go to our saturated mixture tables, in this case by temperature, and we find that for a temperature of 100 C, VF is 0 0.001043. And that's our answer. Just to review what we're stating, sure, this value is really only true for 100 degrees Celsius and 101.42 kilopascals. But since what we found is that increasing the pressure barely changes the specific volume, 101.42 or 500 kilopascals won't make the specific volume increase by much. Remember to check out the other examples for this topic in the description below, where you'll also find links to the other lectures of the thermodynamics course and even other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.